so we have Eduardo Casali, uh, and uh, he's going to tell us about higher genius monodromy relations and color kinematics. Right. So, uh, so please start. Mm -hmm. Good. So thank you, the organizers, for organizing this conference and for inviting me to give a talk. So my talk now, it's, it's as good as Sebastian gave a talk uh, slightly before, because it's, it's a little bit of a continuation, is work that I've been doing uh, with Sebastian in Piotr. Uh, and this, the, in particular, what I'm going to talk about is uh, it's on this paper that came out earlier this week, and all the details are there because I'll try to keep this um, a, a bit light on the technical details, but if you're interested in exactly how everything combines our factors of pi, i, and a half, then you can go and, and look at the paper. But please do ask me if you have any questions. All right, so, I mean, you already seen, you, you're very well uh, versed on, on this color kinematics, just, but just to set up some uh, notation and just remind you again about it is that, um, if, you take a, if you take a young Mills amplitude and write in terms of trivalent graphs, you can, after some work, if you start family diagrams, after some work, you can write it in this form where you have you're just some of the trivalent graphs, you have propagators for each of those graphs, you have some numerical numerators and you have some color factors, this is C gamma. And what you find is that for triples of graphs, these color factors will be an identity which graphically we write it like this, but it is obeyed by the scholar factors, which are just traces of uh, algebra matrices, and they obey this because of the Jacobi identity, right? And what was found by uh, Bern Corso and Ben Casco and Johansson some time ago, is that if you take the kinematic numerators to obey the same algebra, if you somehow find some numerators that for each trip, for all the triples of trivalent graphs related by those, those moves obey this identity, then you can just strip out the color factors and put in this X, this new um, numerators obeying this identity and you get for free a gravitational amplitude. And that's very, very neat. That's very, very nice. Uh, but we don't know very much about the origins of, of this. So certainly a uh, Lagrangian origin is, is very far. There's, there has been lots of attempts, but so far what we've known is really just calculating the stuff. So we, we can prove things at three level, and there's a lot of, lot of interesting results at three level. And we can check, it has been checked for numerous, numerous, numerous examples at loop level for up to five loops. Um, and we haven't seen anywhere where it just goes wrong, but we don't know the scope of it uh, and how far can we push you know, from first principles, or even if it holds, for, even though we, we do from arguments, we expect that this is some kind of gravitational amplitude, but you know. And there's also some interesting, very interesting uh, non-perturbative generalizations where talk about actual solutions to the nonlinear equations of motion on super, uh, of gravity and young mills and how you can uh, extend or find an analog analogous of this double copy to these uh, solutions as we've seen in previous talks like in Donald's talk uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, so that's very nice, but if you try to extend this three level results to higher loops, then you, you start to run into some issues. Um, one is, the usual issue that in this representation with loop momenta, uh, there is, from field theory, there's no canonical definition of loop momenta. You can just shift them willy nilly. So um, there's uh, kinematical numerators are not unambiguously defined because you can always just shift the loop momenta on them. Uh, and the other is just, it, it is difficult to find them, uh, to find this specific, explicitly this uh, numerators it's actually the way the, the uh, color kinematics duality. Right, and so we can take a step back and ask, so more fundamentally, where did they come from? And if you can understand where they come from, maybe you can understand how can we at least prove or show, give some algorithm to how to find them a higher loops or, or at least if it doesn't hold then tell us exactly why it doesn't hold or how can we try to tweak it around, around such that it, it makes it hold. Um, 
so it, uh, I think it is a very interesting question to try to address. It's how to exactly find the origin of this. And one of the avenues is to try to choose a string theory. And why, why do we think that? Well, at three level, there's a, a very interesting relation between a string theory and this color kinematics numerators that comes from the monotony relations. This was found some time ago, which basically, and I'm gonna explain what monotony relations are in, in a second, but these are relations between string amplitudes that have as coefficients to this to the string amplitudes, this linear relation between string amplitudes where the coefficients are some functions on the kinematics. And what you find is that when you take the field theory limit of that, uh, you find that these relations are satisfied by color kinematic numerators and the color kinematic satisfying numerators in, in the sense that it seems that the string theory really likes to organize its field theory limit in this um, uh, color kinematic satisfying numerators way in this BCJ satisfying way, at least at three level, we see that explicitly that that's very neat. Uh, we saw that in the uh, talk earlier by Sebastian that also that you can use string theory to find those forms on the moduli space. And then we work a little bit uh, uh, to get those forms in a nice uh, uh, D-log form. And then you can use residues to actually extract this BCJ satisfying numerators from those forms. But, and then this was, of course, this is residues on this moduli space of, of pun n puncture genus zero, so n puncture Riemann surfaces, which is very neat. Um, so, and so in that sense, string theory seems to at least at three level be related to, to color kinematics. And moreover, it is also related to double, double copy in a slightly different way, but through the KLT relations, the, the Carolyn and Tai relations which for the string theory amplitude, they work a bit different than this three level, uh, than working at three level, uh, at three valent graphs. It works in as a bilinear on the string amplitudes in the sense that uh, KLT tells you how at three level, you can build a gravitational amplitude by squaring two young mills amplitudes with a matrix built out of Mandelstam uh, invariants in this way. And of course, by incorporate this is related to monotony relations and then you can use both of them together to, uh, to uh, study double copy. But uh, this is something that it's nice that happens at three level. It would be nice also to understand at some point this at loop level. But what I'm gonna do very explicitly here is uh, study this monotony relations that I told you about, but then, uh, but the loop level version of this relations, which were found quite recently, and that we also uh, uh, study in terms of some mathematics called uh, twisted forms, which uh, in twisted homology, which you heard Simone talk about it, and you heard also Sebastian talk about it. But I'm not going to talk too much about this, uh, the relation to the twisted homology. What I'm going to talk about is really how to get the filter limit of these relations properly and to really get into the nitty gritty details and how to see that every term, how the terms combine and how they cancel. Right. Because uh, as I said before, at three level, the cancellation of these monotony relations, uh, really the, con the, the, the cancellation that happens in this monotony relations and the filter limit is really, really related to BCJ. So I want to see if that holds and how it holds uh, at loop level. Uh, so, so at three level, the monotony relations, then as I said before, they're, re they're linear relations between string amplitudes. So this is uh, some string amplitude and I denote here by uh, this, uh, you just get a circle, this is the string worksheet. It's an open string, so it has a boundary. You put your young, young your particles here on the boundary and it has some ordering which is reflected on this ordering here on the arguments. <clears throat> and the monotony relations then just tell you that there is, they, they are not all, not all the orderings are independent. There's some relation between them, uh, which is uh, with coefficients in this exponential of the Mandelstam invariance. So you can see that it has a very neat um, structure in the sense that if I, stay, if I take particle one and I start hopping particle one between the particles, all it does is just, it accumulates the phase of the particles that it's hopping through. That, and that's basically, you, you go all the way to the end and then that's equal to zero. And these are the monotony relations. Uh, 
so wh what is the origin of them? The, the, their origin in the string theory really comes from uh, the multivalueness of the string integral. So if you write down, uh, this is a, still a three level amplitude on the string theory, you have one piece, which is okay, theory dependent, but it's really, it has no branch cuts. That's the important part. It has no branch cuts on Z, which are the position of the particles around this uh, annulus. But you have also a universal piece on the string amplitudes, which is given by the Kobanisian factor. And this is really a multivalued function on the moduli space. And just like what Simone was saying about string in, uh, about the Feynman integrants, you can build a, a twisted homology uh, and the twisted cohomology uh, theory on that that tells you that actually, and then you can extract relations of that homology. And those relations on homology is really just the monodromy relations in this case. But the important part to think to, to keep in mind is that this is the universal part of string amplitudes, right? So. What happens when I go to uh, a loop level, then, so there's a, well, well, I'm gonna work in a representation where I have an explicit loop momenta and there are technical reasons why you do that. You can ask me later about that. But basically for uh, when I go to the higher genus or higher loop surface, I add uh, more boundaries. And basically you can think about each boundary is, is related to a loop because I can pick some a uh, cycle that interpolates between those boundaries. And, I, and if I measure some particular charge on the worksheet in those cycles, that is related to the loop moment of running through those cycles. So a G loop amplitude will have G um, cuts uh, here in the middle, and I have a G loop moment here. Uh, this is uh, some integral over the model space, and we're not gonna talk about this explicitly. I have again this uh, theory dependent uh, form on top of it, which is not important. And I have a generalization of the Kobanusian factor, which uh, has a new piece, which is, relates to the loop momentum that is as simple as this, so just as loop momentum times case. Uh, and I have a new piece, no, sorry, I have an old piece, which is just like the Kobanusian at three level in the sense that this is some generalization of ZI minus ZJ. It just means that it's a unique thing on this Riemann surface that has a simple zero when ZI goes to ZJ. And so, and because of that, it is multivalued. It has a branch cut on or around ZI goes to ZJ, basically. So <clears throat> this is the difference. Um, because higher genus, one genus one and higher genus, there's not much difference uh, in how to set up things. It just gets a bit more complicated uh, in terms of the keeping track of all the indices. So I'm gonna talk about the genus one because that's the simplest one to visualize. <clears throat> in this case, I just have an annulus and I have one loop momenta that is going to is measure uh, through this uh, cycle. And because I have a translation, I have one killing vector on, on a genus one surface, I, I can, fix one puncture and I'm gonna just fix that puncture to be here, just as a gauge decision, you can fix it to be anywhere. And in genus one you have, you can put particles around uh, out, out either the outer boundary or the inner boundary like this. Now, because I cut the loop momenta, I'm, I'm measuring the loop momenta around here, then it's, uh, it effectively is equal to thinking about this uh, annulus as being just this rectangle where it has been cut along this loop momentum. So you can think that if you cross this line, it basically just telling you to add some, you're just shifting your loop momentum. And this is the figure uh, that we're gonna work on that. Uh, and what we do is really to get this uh, monotonous relation is really just a counter argument on this, uh, on this rectangle. And you can look at this previous paper that I mentioned to see exactly how uh, this works. It's, I'm, I'm going through over a, couple, a bunch of details because that, that's not the, the focus of the talk. And the only thing I want to uh, mention here is that uh, I'm gonna work at the level uh, of the string integrand. So from three level, we talk about the string amplitudes, but here uh, I'm gonna talk a level of the string integrand. And by that, I mean, I'm gonna strip out, I'm gonna work at fixed tau and fixed L. So fixed modular of, moduli of the surface and fixed loop momentum. 
And I'm going to talk about this function and relation between those functions at, uh, that are inside this integral that, that I, is a fixed loop momentum and a fixed tau. So usually the string integrands are the things that are integrated along these boundaries, either this one or this one. But because I've cut the surface, I also have this J contributions that, that are integrals that run along this, uh, these cycles, these A cycles, which are not things that you usually get if you just do your string theory. Usually if you just do your string theory, the, the string theory tells you to integrate things along these cycles. And this is not there, but in order to get these relations to work correctly, you need to include those, those uh, cycles. So I'm gonna call J as the cycles, these weird cycles, these new cycles that runs along the A cycle, and I, the ones that are usual string integrals that go along the boundaries, right? So these are the genus one monodromy relations. Um, it has a structure just like the three level one that when one just jumps particles, it just accumulates phases. But if it jumps from one boundary to another, so this slash just, just separates particles in one boundary from particles from in another boundary. So once it jumps a boundary, it gets a factor of uh, the loop momenta and then keeps accumulating phases. So those terms are easy to understand. Uh, well, they are easy generalizations if you think about it of the genus zero. But as I said before, you have those J terms, which are this counters along the eight cycles, which appear. And it also has phases depending on loop momenta and the particles. And we have two of them, one for each, um, one for the bottom and one for the top of this rectangle. So the new thing really is how to extract the future limit of these J cycles. So the I's, because they are just usual string theory integrants, you can look on the literature and there was being worked by Ben Tossover very system, systematizing this one loop, how to take the filter limit of these guys exactly and which kind of diagrams you get out of that. So you can just basically uh, go and look at the paper and see exactly the terms we get. But these are new ones. And so, and to really see what they give, you have to very carefully take this limit and see which kind of terms you get. So basically we do the work that they did, but in those, in these terms. Uh, and we kind of knew that we knew that they had to be there and we knew we kind of have some idea what they, uh, kind of terms they gave um, because there was some paper, there was some work beforehand by Ocher, Alpertin, and Ho where they guessed what kind of terms they needed, but they didn't, cal they didn't calculate from first principles. And that's what we're doing here. So usually when you take the field theory limit, what it means is that, very naively, is that you, you're making this worksheet very, very, very thin. And when you make this worksheet very, very, very thin, basically means you're going to different boundaries on the modular space. So you can think about several ways of making this, this worksheet very thin. One of them will just, you keep all the particles separated, make it very, very thin, and that ends up on the limit, giving you some box in, like this, when we have four points. Uh, or you can make this strip very, very thin, but you have two particles that are getting very close together, like two and three, and that splits out a long tube that in the limit becomes, uh, uh, sorry, becomes a tree that splits off and you get something like a, a triangle like this. So the new thing, the interesting thing here is that if you keep track of where I define my loop momenta, if you keep track of this cycle here, then you have a, can only, you have a unique definition of the loop momenta in the sense that if I define the loop momenta here, as I defined just what the loop momenta defined before leg one, like here, I also have to define the loop momenta uh, on leg one uh, uh, here just before leg one. So there is a system, there is a way of systematically defining loop momenta consistently between all the graphs that comes because the all the the all these graphs are derived from the string theory. So this gives you a definition of the loop momenta. So you you, you're not really allowed to shift it. You just keep it fixed uh, at all points on this calculation and you can do that for, and the same story holds when you have more and more particles and you keep doing that. So for this usually string integrand I, what happens then in the field theory limit, it, it's again, it's just following Baron Kosover, is that if you get some integrand that has a derivative of the propagator, which is basically a simple pole and when zi goes to zij, uh, times some function that doesn't have a pole, uh, and, and I separate into some phi two, which is, a, that, uh, is some function that doesn't have a, a simple pole when zi goes to zij. 
So these are going to be the there's going to be the numerators of your field theory when you take the field theory down. Is that you get a bunch of trivial graphs by the thinning of the surface, as I said before, uh, with this specific combination of numerators. So a tree because uh, when I have a, 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 a tree splitting out, it gives me a phi one. Basically, comes from this simple pole integrating it out. It gives me this phi one, and when I have the box-like thing where it does it here, then it gets a, a contribution numerator like this, right? And as I said before, this comes from boundaries, distinct boundaries on the model space, and you get all of these three valid graphs uh, with this kind of uh, numerators. So I'm gonna do something similar for the J's now. Uh, so here I'm just focusing on the particular integral, which is new, which is this integral from uh, zero to a half, which is the integral along this A cycle. Uh, right, uh, so this is specifically what it is. It's just some combination of theta functions. You can look later or ask me later for the details on this. Uh, what we need to do the field theory limit is really this um, tropical scaling. So I'm gonna scale the coordinates and then take alpha prime to zero. So I scale in this way, taking alpha prime to zero, then you, you really recover this word line propagator, uh, which is just this mod of the difference as we expect, but of course, from here, you see that you have some uh, phase, some factors that come out in front, and that indeed gives you some phases. And what we find is that if you take the tropical limit very, uh, on the J's, you find two new ingredients. You find some phases, and phases, some of which are just usual, which you expect, but also some phases of this factor of a half, which is really, really unexpected, and there's, we don't really, have an, a good idea. I mean, we know where they are there. They are there because we did a calculation, but we don't understand them completely. And you get also new terms. For example, you get some contact terms, which are things that you don't really usually see when you take a, a, a filter limit of a string amplitude. Usually when you take a filter limit of the string amplitude, and you look only at the massless modes, you only get three valent graphs. You don't get contact terms. So those are the new things that we find. The phases, I mean, you have the usual phases, which I mean, they're, they're phases that come because of this accumulation of phases, basically, on the, on the, on the model relations. But, you, uh, <clears throat> but this new phase really comes, technically comes because this integral along this edge, in, this, uh, in the way that we parameterize the integral is real, as opposed to from this, which are imaginary. So that drops out this factor of a half. And we, we really do need this factor of a half to get the constellations later on. And this is something that is going to generalize to higher genus. Very, uh, we can there's are, we can argue that this phase is really there, and it's really something like this for any genus. We're going to have this kind of thing that sits in front of the um, in front of those terms. And there is also a new uh, new kind of uh, boundary, if you want, because usually to create these triangles, as I said before, you need this simple pole, and really this comes from these two particles getting together and basically splitting out. You can do a compound transformation to see that this is a really long tube. And then you integrate over the coordinate on this long tube to generate this, 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 prop this, um, this propagator here for this uh, tree. Uh, when you take the filter limit here for this graph J, it will also generate a triangle, but it really comes because when you make this, uh, this strip very, very thin and you have this particle being integrated along this cycle, even if you, if, even if you, I mean, there is no way to not make, do not get them to get close together in this limit. They are squeezed together. So if you have some simple pull, you will get a triangle like that with that uh, phi one coefficient I had before. But also, you have this contact term. So if you don't, if you have a term that doesn't have a single pull, you also get a contact term uh, times uh, a factor of a half, which is basically just the size of the strip because you. In the field theory limit, we don't need to squeeze, we don't need to rescale the, the coordinate on this strip. So it's really new things that happen. You, that you have to be careful when you take the field theory limit of this guy. Uh, we don't have that much time. So, so okay, going back to the monotony relations then, as I said, I have um, the usual string integrants, as you would expect, plus this new J cycles. Uh, this, you take the field theory limit, we know what these are, three valent graphs given by this burn cassaway rules. But for the J's, we have this field theory limit, which is that this, um, which are these new kind of triangles and other kind of stuff. But you also have these contact terms. And one thing that I didn't say before, but these, these contact terms come with an extra factor of a, a, of a prime. Uh, but they, 
they look like a massive kind of thing, but they are not massive. They are just there. Uh, expanding in this way, you find two relations, as you usually know. There is one that just takes into account this usual field theory, and you can see that at, uh, one loop, and these are two loops. These are relations that people have found before in the literature. Because you don't have any kind of coefficients in front of them, you can just integrate out, and this relation between integrands becomes relation between amplitudes and things that we already know. Uh, here, because I have these phases on front and they depend on Mandel's term, you can, uh, and depend on loop momentum, you cannot just integrate them out. So these are relations between the integrands, but very, very importantly, they hold that fixed loop momentum. So you don't, so these are algebraic relations that really just gives you zero when you look at them. Right, so um, now if you look at the, the ordered one relations, you can check that all this, this trivalent graphs from here and from here, they just cancel them out term by term. There's nothing, there's no mystery there. As I said before, you can integrate all these terms out and this just gives you zero. Uh, if you just disintegrate and then you just get relations, if you integrate out this, you just get relations between actual amplitudes out of them. Uh, for the, or, or the ordered relation, the order of a prime relation, then you have some known trivial things going on, basically, these are already known in the literature, but you, you can also see here explicitly that the, the phases between those graphs, they conspire in such a way that you get console propagators. So if you look at some triple of graphs like this, you find that the phases cancel this propagator, cancel this and cancel this. And so all those graphs get, um, get punched up into this kind of uh, graph without any propagator in the middle with a coefficient in front of it given by this uh, numerical factors. And then we see that for this to be zero, we have, they have Chobay color kinematics. So we see that if you take this burning cause over representation and, and we take the filter limit, and you look at the filter limit of the monotony relations, you find these coefficients that have Chobay color kinematic factors. With the caveat that this hold, if you're, if you're looking at graphs that are generated away from this uh, boundary, it's because what happens when it goes to this boundary is that you, you are missing some graphs that will give you the full PCJ tri triple. And what happens is that terms from J, specifically these new trees and these contact terms, actually cancel completely any of the terms that you'll get from here. So you don't get any uh, PCJ coefficients out of, uh, from triples out of this part, you just get a complete cancellation. So, uh, so we don't, you don't really see anything happening there. And why is that relevant? That's relevant That's because that's um, related to this labeling problem, which basically says, so if you get in this um, example here, if I do some, if I look at some BCJ moves along this, sorry, along these legs, and then I can exchange those trees, but my definition of the loop momenta is always here. So it's always, um, it's always the same, but, uh, is always consistent. But if I try to do it here, I find uh, uh, that this BCJ moves change the definition of the loop momenta, and, and then that's an ambiguity and I don't, and then it, that makes it hard to actually find uh, BCJ satisfying numerators because now you're comparing graphs with different uh, propagators. And we find what happens is that this, G, because of those J's, really the string theory uh, avoids this problem by basically just canceling this problem, this, this, uh, troublesome uh, graphs out of that. Right, so. Uh, I assume you're almost done? Sorry? You're almost done? Almost done, almost done. Okay, great. So just in, in short then, if you take the, uh, of a prime, if you take the filter limit of this, um, another relation, the string theory in this uh, bernco representation, you do get BCJ satisfying numerators away from the edges, but uh, and, you, and this filter limit of J really gives you some new terms that cancel those things, uh, those, those troublesome uh, graphs. So now quickly, just to finish a uh, couple of slides, there's higher loops, almost everything that I said goes through to higher genus. There's some new, uh, filter, there's a filter limit of some new, new terms that appear at genus three, which basically is when you have to stretch this propagator here, this, this uh, guy here, and then there's some things you have to work out. And that's the new thing that you have to work out, but we have some like, good idea what happens, but we just need a good parameterization to understand this field theory limit properly. Um, but we do expect that even a higher genus, if you have a proper representation, 
you also will find um, BCJ satisfying numerators in the future limit if you're away from these edges. Uh, but the, the BCJ representations defined from the monotony relations are the ones that always involve some external particles because the monotony relations always involve some external particles go going along the loop. It would be nice to have something that also do something with internal loop momenta, but have to think about how that would come about. Um, if you're thinking about what can this mean for uh, KLT, a higher genus, a higher loop, then because if you're looking at a basis of, uh, an R basis of cycles for this monotony relations, we have this J cycles, which means that in the future limit, we're gonna have contact terms. And if you have more particles, you're gonna have more higher valency contact terms. So it seems that these contact terms, if you, if you think about a KLT relation, are unavoidable, unavoidable higher genus. You, you are going to have to use these contact terms. So they might be related to this kind of things that happen uh, that have been seen in the literature before, like generalized BCJ, but we, we still were very, very in the infancy of that. We don't have much to say about that beyond this. Uh, it would be also very nice to have some kind of connection to residues on this uh, model A space, to have some kind of formula like this, like Sebastian had happened, uh, was showing, or some relation between the second theory and model space. We, we still don't know much about this. We're thinking about this kind of things. Thank you. Okay, well, th thanks a lot. Uh, since I've worked out how the hand raising works, please raise your hand if you have a question. Um, I don't see questions. Uh, maybe I, oh wait, uh, sorry I do. There's Stefan Stieberger. Stuff. Yeah, um, I have a question. Could you go to uh, your page uh, 14, please? I don't know which one is 14. Uh, the one uh, with, with the monotromy relations. This one? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, this one. So um, these are the relations which have been derived by Hoenegger and myself. Yes. And um, so what uh, can you, I mean, I, I'm confused. Um, so can you say anything new about uh, string monotromy relations at one loop? No, what we are saying new here is about the filter limit of these guys. Yeah, but we also did the field theory limit of these guys in, in our paper. So, I mean, that's, I mean, um, but um, maybe you go to the next page. Uh, so, and what do you mean by this conjectured structure um, in this uh, 2017 paper? I mean, I think uh, the point of this their paper was exactly that they do not have these terms, uh, tau, and they also wanted to- uh, Well, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they say in that paper is that, which we, we discussed before is that uh, they, they thought that they, uh, they, this, you will always integrate out these terms, which is not true, as you know, because they come out with these extra phases, so you cannot integrate them out. And, and because of that, they saw that they will get cancellation if you were allowed to shift the loop momenta, exactly because you got those graphs which have shift loop momenta. And because they had a shift loop momenta, in order to get a cancellation, you had to, you had to shift the loop momenta in the integrand, so you don't get cancellation of fixed loop momenta. So they, don't have, so they don't have this term, so they also cannot have uh, conjectured them. Since I don't have, can, some. I, can I can I comment since I'm around? Um, moreover, uh, so could me could you remind me what is not the difference between um, the paper by by Hoenecker and uh, and this this papers? Because in your talk now it sounded like that uh, that um, that um, that you were the first who who have have, have discovered these terms tau, these boundary terms, and this boundary. No, no, no. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Those terms were there. Essential, uh, the crucial point why uh, why uh, we had had this monotromy relations correct. Uh, no, I agree. Your guy, your guys. I don't understand why you now make a half of your talk, uh, just talk about this string monotromy relations and you have n zero new result about them. Sorry, I mean you have zero new results about uh, one loop string monotromy relations. Yes, I didn't say anything new about the string monotromy relations. Exactly. But that's not the point. I'm yeah, talking but about this very carefully and how things co combine into terms of BCJ nice. or not BCJ. Yeah, part of the talk is quite nice, but could you explain us what is the difference between uh, this or what is the status with this additional terms, uh, which, which, um, which. Okay, so, so we, we had this discussion and we had discussion with other people. 
So as we said before, the, the, we, you had, there was a, a previous paper with uh, Piotr and Pierre where they, they thought that these terms will just go away if you integrate out, you can always integrate them out as long, and then the monotony relations will be obeyed as long as you shift the loop moment. Huh? So in other words, and, this paper is wrong, right? Because they had not this term, so they had the wrong monotony <laughs> relations. No, but they, but they had some right results, but yes, they, they were wrong that this phase was not there. Your yeah, papers, your phase was, that was there, and as I said, it was right because you do need those phases to get this constellation. Yeah, um, so the result the alpha prime. That is right. I'm not saying. You know, that, I'm not saying that to me, it sounds. Like, it sounds like this should not be done in front of 150 people. Please sure. do this in private. Uh, maybe we should just go on and and uh, go to the next person. Uh, so, uh, uh, Ricar Ricardo, you're next. Thank you. Um, so to, to study field theory, there's been this model, this ambitious strings, and, um, and we, we try to extract uh, field theory integrants from that. However, uh, in the way that uh, we could do it, um, these sort of unorthodox representation of the loop integrand appear where these sort of linear type propagators appeared. And somehow, on the one hand, that avoided the labeling problem, but of course gave some representation that has other unwanted features. Um, do you see um, in, in this way of doing things that, that, that this can be adapted to, um, to these ambitious strings? I don't know if you want to use the empty string in the way that you've done before with the nodal sphere, you're, you're going to have the, I don't know how to do, I would love to know how to do the quadratic propagators. I don't know how to do the quadratic propagators. Um, if you work in the nodal sphere, as you did before. You know, but the question is how to go from the torus to the nodal sphere. And maybe this gives a different way of doing it. Yeah, no. So yeah, if you try to just take the, the Q equals to zero and take Take that residue there, as you know, you get the you, you get the non quadratic. What we would like to have is some kind of generalized, uh, not very, very speculative. If you had some kind of generalized residue that, in effect, is like the tropical limit or uh, somehow takes the takes somehow emulates the tropical limit, then we will get quadratic propagators. But if you just naively take residues on the moduli space, you, you, you know, as well, you get those linear propagators. And I don't know, I don't have anything more to say on that. Than just that. Thanks. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, so what I propose is um, we open the floor to uh, general questions uh, for Simone uh, or, um, or Eduardo. There's more questions, so please raise your hand and we'll just uh, go down the order of uh, people with raised hands. Okay, so next I see that uh, Lance, is, Lance has a raised hand. Hi. Uh, so Lance, please. Eduardo, uh, nice talk. Uh, can you clarify when you say that you found these relations that Zvi and I and Dave and David found do you mean the relations between the leading color partial amplitudes and the subleading ones? In other words, things you can get just by SUN group theory? Uh, the ones... Or do you mean something different? No, I, I think those ones, the ones that level, the, I think they're just the group theory. This one's, yeah, I think they're just the group theory ones. I don't In think that- In other words, at tree level, you, from the monodromy relations, you can also extract analogous relations, the kleiss koif relations. Yes. But at a different order, you can get the BCJ relations. Exactly, yeah, so but, but the analogous the, of the KK relations. And they, from the order zero, you can't get the, uh, you just get the group theory relations at one loop. Yes, I, th I, think, I think that's true, yes. Okay. So, so just to, come, to jump in, those are the shuffle relation. If you have a non-planar Amplitude, yeah. you can express it as a sum of uh, planar amplitude yeah. shuffled. Which we could also derive cleanly from the FABC ring structure with Vittorio and Fabio later on. And I mean, same, same sort of thing, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, 